you would rather be in that sick bed than them. Will you squeeze my fingers for me with your left hand? I'll swap you. Let me swap you. I live with a heart pump. I live on batteries which last for about eight hours. It's keeping me alive. There is a lot of empathy towards what I'm going through. It's not really what I want. I just want people to sign up on the organ donor register. It's never happened to anyone before. The pump shouldn't be stopping. They don't know why it's stopping. And if it did stop permanently, then I could imminently die. Oh, this is lovely. This is ever so clear of Jim. I've not watched any that have been this clear. If you'd have known then what you know now, would you have done it differently? It's just so cute. Just think, God, he had no idea what was ahead of him. Well, we, none of us had any idea what was ahead of him. It's a bit of a mess. So what are you doing today, Jim? I am currently packing up to move into my new accommodation at uni. I'm very excited, actually. So who's oldest out of you two? Me. Five, 16 minutes. The whole thing does work. Yeah. So uh, am I closing this? Yeah. yeah. Why am I doing this? Thank you. Oh. Dad, can you bring this down, please? Fluck and going on holiday. Effectively, Adam. How long? Forever. <laughs> no. All in. You all right with that? Yeah, it's headbreaking. Have you got everything? All right. All set. We'll see you later then. Bye. Have a good journey. Thank you. Take a right and wait. Me and my sister got meningitis about two weeks into our lives. It affected my heart, enlarged it quite significantly, almost twice the size of a normal human heart. I was quite well until I was about seven. I had a consecutive cardiac arrest when I was eight. I was 17 where I had another cardiac arrest. And then when I was 19, heart failure rapidly progressed. I couldn't have a transplant because my lung function, my liver function, all my organs were failing. The only option really was to have a heart pump fitted, something called a left ventricle assisted device, uh, a pump um, attached to the left side of my heart, which effectively beats my heart for me. It's not ideal, a lot of limitations, but it's keeping me alive. It's better than being sat in a hospital bed. In the day, I live on batteries, which last for about eight hours. Thankfully, Grace, my sister, shook off the virus, which left her unscarred. I now live with the pump, and it's a bridge to transplant. In the UK, there's 6,500 patients on the transplant list. 
in terms of waiting for a heart transplant. I was told three years, three years ago. Feeling good? Yeah, man. I'm excited. You've got some. So the med section, you want here for now anyway. Yeah. So should we get your kit set up? Um, I just don't know where to plug it. I was going to put it here. Yeah, that's a good idea. And do you um, pass this stuff? Um, towards the end of September, so over two months. Freedom. I never expected to be going to uni or to be living this sort of normal life with this pump. I'm totally living on my own this time, like heightening my independence. I've always loved food, food technology, food nutrition. I found it really interesting. Now I study food marketing with a new heart having the ability to do a nine to five job. That is my number one ambition. When I do get this degree and when I do get the heart. Hey, man. Hi, man. Hi, man. Oh, he wants to film. <laughs> you say he can hear you. He's shaking his head. <laughs> Wait, have you got exams coming up? Or? Um, I've got two, four, two performances. Oh, uh, OK. Absolute legend. See you in a bit. Uh, go Nando's. Um, I'm just about to go to the football. Um, and this keeps beeping and I'm quite concerned. I am off to the hospital um, because my pump has been beeping all morning. This is sort of an emergency. Um, it's never happened to anyone before. The pump shouldn't be stopping. They don't know why it's stopping and they wouldn't know how to start it um, if it did stop permanently. And if it did stop permanently, then I could imminently die. Hello, Jim. Darling. How are you doing? We're hoping tomorrow that he will get taken off the ventilator and be allowed to come round a little to see whether we can move forward a little bit further. James? Will you squeeze my fingers for me with your left hand? Will you squeeze my fingers with your left hand? We're just going to pop him back off to sleep, man, just because this tube is making a noise that I don't like. So OK. OK. It's all right, darling. I just need to try and get some sleep now, if you can. You can ring me if you need me or call me. I'll hear you, all right? Good night, darling. It took him nearly two weeks to come out of the induced coma. You would rather be in that sick bed than them. You know, how many times I think to myself, I've had 52 years. Give the guy a break, he's only had 22. I'll swap you, let me swap you, you know. And I sometimes have really stupid thoughts in my head thinking, if I was to suddenly have a car crash and die, would they let him have my car? <laughs> or would it end up going to the person on the emergency list? And you just think, probably go to the emergency list. You know, you've got a chance of saving your own boy and you can't even do that.
took me like half an hour last week. It was so much quicker. It's weird, like, how rare and how unusual it is that this has happened. I don't think it's happened to anyone in the UK that it's turned off. Oh. I said, do you mind if I wait for a bit and see if a heart comes through, rather than having another pump? And they said, we can't do that because the average wait for a heart on that day was three months. It's just, I can't believe the deals that I get. Yeah, do you have antibiotics as well? Yeah, I'll take them shortly. Yeah. It's a very sad looking room now, isn't it? I don't know whether we're going to get it all in, Jim. You, you grab that. Can you manage those two? Done a good job there. It was the technology. If the technology hadn't played up, I'd be sat in that room right now, getting ready to go out for a meal with my friends or go out and watch the football. It's so frustrating. Is that uni done for you, do you reckon? Yeah, definitely. I'll just read it out to you what I'm on. I'm on Flecanade is the only antiarrhythmic drug. Um, I'm on carbimazole, codeine, epleurone, flecanade, uh, fluxicillin, fruzamide, paracetamol, ranitidine, sildenafil, warfarin. Yeah, I'll write it all down now. I've got the book right here. I'm sorry to be on the phone so much to you. It's just every pain is panic stations. OK. Oh, I'll see you again. Cheers. Bye. And that is job done for the day, nine till five. Let's get all that. When the twins had meningitis, I remember writing what was happening at the time. So they gave me that. James Linsky, two weeks old, on Sunday morning, the first feed at 8.30am, James looked very grey and very cold. The beginning of the biggest nightmare, which I'm still stuck in the middle of. <laughs> I'm still stuck in the middle of. The doctors asked if they could do a lumbar puncture to rule out meningitis. We phoned for the results and total shock as it was confirmed as being positive. I returned straight back to the hospital as James had had an added problem, his heart was running far too fast. See there, so it's a little, so it's not quite healed up underneath. Friday's joy, James returns home. 
The scan was a little improved, not normal, but won't be until all the medications are ceased. God alone knows what the future holds, but James and Grace will be well loved and cared for. I'm probably better off to be living with pumps. And I just feel like a, a, a new heart is the last sort of operation that I could take. You need to recover from all of this. Definitely. That's, that's a given. If things are very, very stable with the pump, for example, then it's difficult to... Um, Consider that. Yeah. Like mm. Something that is probably worth having at the back of your mind if something mm. doesn't work out well. Here's my dad. There's the graduate. Ta -da. <laughs> That's a nice one before they went as well. Oh, yeah. It's a good day though, wasn't it, Grace? No, I didn't think so. She I worked a bum it, off at the end. The last three months, it was all I or nothing. I was actually going to fail. Oh, yeah. Tossing the, uh, the standard tossing of the hat. Some, that about sums up my uh, three years oh, at uni. Oh, dear, Grace. I honestly don't know how you did it. I really don't. How's it going? All right, just chatting. You feeling OK? Yeah. yeah. You need to be sad. No, I'm fine. I like you're sad. So you're just a bit worried. What happened was, like, a 0-point-something percent chance. It's gonna be okay. I might book some more stuff. Yeah. Should we go through the? Do you know uh... anyone that would go to a James Blunt concert? <laughs> I mean, I really like you as a mate, but I'm not doing that with okay. you. Okay. Just so you. I'll know. go with you. It's a week today. I know it's Tuesday. Yeah, I'm working. I think. Grace yeah. is frantically trying to find me a reason <laughs> not to go. <laughs> Yeah. Read that again. Greg says sorry. I feel bad if if I'm down because I know that then Jim Jim feels worse. <laughs> but then I can't help feeling really down if Jim's not in a good place. So it's like we'll both be happier if we know that each other are okay, if you know what I mean. Go and have fun. Go and have a night out. Yeah. Honestly, I literally appreciate it so much. It's all cool. You've got your keys, right? Yes. So I won't bolt that back and stuff. Um, Now. Happy New Year, mate. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's a wish Snapchat wasn't invented sometimes. There is no real cool outcome to pleading and professing your sob story. But I feel like I've done it as effectively and as innovatively as I can do. The reality of waiting for an organ, it's a topic that is so fleeting on the news. You could go, like, up on the grass where the Eureka sign is. OK. Should um, do that. Jordan, do you mind being photographer, please? I thought, OK, I'm going to develop a campaign. I wanted it to be more generalised to everyone on the transplant list. Thank you. It's called Save Non Lives. No, it's a nice pick. Do you one more camera? Oh, my God. OK. Would you guys like a party bag? Yeah, there's a couple of sweets in here. There's oh, a lolly. Really We're just raising awareness uh, for organ donation today. So, Thank you. thanks, guys. Hope you feel better. <laughs> oh, are you twins? Yeah. Are you? Oh, I'm a twin. Me and Grace oh, are yeah. twins. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a leaflet for you guys to read over if you get the chance. Yeah. Do a donation or is it? No, free? it's free. It's free. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, raising awareness. That's all. Right. Have a great day. Thank you for stopping by. There's uh, 500 children on the waiting list, so we're just opening it up for all ages. Cheers for stopping, though, mate. Appreciate it. Have a good day.
it's awkward to be approaching families and saying, if your little one dies, their organs could be harvested on a happy touristy day out. We're raising awareness for organ donation. I'm, right. I'm waiting for a heart myself, so we're giving away a few bits of information. That is so, brilliant. Yeah, and I could probably, you know, qualify for a heart off anyone here today, as strange as that sounds. So just trying, trying my best. There is a lot of empathy, sympathy towards what I'm going through. It's not really what I want. I just want people to sign up as, on the organ donor register. So my, my thoughts initially were around, once the fixtures come out, find a key date and look at branding one of the fixtures, the, yeah. the, the, the Save Nine Lives fixture. But they also have what you have, which is that that spark, that inspiration, that passion. But just for you to for you to take away, oh, to gosh. certificates that you've been trained as an organisation oh, ambassador. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Jim, you put white on since then, I think. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's going on today, Jim? Doing like a little procedure or we'll monitor all your vital organs um, to see if you survive a, a, a transplant. I'm getting loads of pain in my ribs um, from the heart pump, rubbing against it. And the pain is just so unbearable. Um, I just kind of want to have the transplant now. Hey, mate, you're right. Good to see you, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Oh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> this honestly means the world that everyone's come down and supported us, and yeah, thank you. Looking better, no? Mm. Yeah, it is looking better. So why are we going to Manchester? I'm on uh, breakfast tomorrow. Um, BBC breakfast at 7.20 a.m. It's quite big. I'm still in quite a lot of pain. Listen, we've got to get ourselves together, because we yeah, need the case. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you yeah. get dressed. Painkillers, paracetamol. We need some more paracetamol. I'm going to wear this white shirt, I think. All right. Want him to look his best. <laughs> oh, you're right. It's, it's a big day for organ donation. It's quite a lot of pressure, because I'm talking on behalf of 6,000 people who are desperate for organs. adults in England should be made a potential organ donor? Well, that was the question MPs are considering when they debate a bill which could change the system in England to so-called presumed consent. I am very nervous. Are you feeling nervous? You see, that phrase, an outbreak of unity... No, I'm OK. Now, I take that as quite threatening. I'm not going to yeah, tell you that. Really. It does sound like ages at your age. Were you 20...? 22. 22, yeah. so, yeah. you know, a seventh of your life you've been waiting for a heart. Yeah, it's a difficult thing and it's, it's a very fragile subject to promote. I try and promote it with a campaign myself on social media called Save Nine Lives. With it being a soft opt-out system, families can actually reject consent, um, which is the frustrating thing uh, for patients like myself. It's not, um, you know, whether you are or aren't an organ donor, it's whether you have or haven't had that conversation. And I think that that is the key message today. There we go. Thank you. you will have definitely made an impact mm. this morning. Do not oh, underestimate. So. Yeah. And you know, we have a huge audience at the time mm -hmm. you're on, and yeah. it, I mean, you will definitely have made an impact. Yeah. It's amazing. Well done. They were really nice presenters. Jim Linsky suffered heart failure after meningitis attack the organ. I'm the picture on the mirror piece. There's like the front thing. It's pretty nuts. OK. 
Good heavens. So this is the biggest day for the campaign, right? I think so. Well done, man. You should be really proud of yourself. Yeah. Smart. What do you need me to do? I need the shoes and I need you to help me just put the pump away if that's right. myself at the moment, like, I just want to not be in pain. I remember having my cardiac arrest at 17 and thinking, all right, that's the end of my misfortunes. I'm going to go to uni and find myself an amazing degree, a job a girlfriend, a family, all of this, you can get really carried away with what is a normal life and it just hasn't happened. I don't mind leaving whenever, really. What operation number is this? God knows. <laughs> Only person I know who gets his hair checked before an operation. Seeing Jim in so much pain, it's just so difficult. What they hope to do is to have a routine painkilling injection straight into the nerve endings to deaden them, to sort of cut the signal from the nerve to the brain. <sighs> yeah. Just breathe in and out. If you feel any pulsation or anything, you can let us know. Are you feeling anything here now? No, I'm just, no. I'm just struggling to breathe. <coughs> ah. Uh. You OK? I'm really, really, really uncomfortable. 15. Uh, can I get some gas and something? I, I, I can't tell you about it at all. Ah! Where do you want? Ah! Ah! ah. Oh, Nick, have you got enough um, for the job? Oh, yeah. Just yeah. thinking we could maybe just hover outside or... or I don't know. Do you need to film anymore? I was just... Yeah, is he going to go to sleep? No. I basically want to wait until he's out of pain. Cool. I'll, um, I'll cut and I'll go upstairs. I didn't understand how I could possibly do it with two. But the reality of having twins, I can't even tell you how good he is. <laughs> oh, that's hard. Yeah, I'd have four lots of twins next time I had my time again. 